Hey gang, Dave Spaulding, Handgun Combatives. This is a new format for me. This, I am told, is an Ask Me Anything, an AMA format that uh, my director of marketing, my son-in-law Darren says, is kind of popular on um, YouTube. Uh, he sent me a sample done by a comic on television, and I'm not going to try to be too comical unless it's appropriate, but I'm going to try to ask or answer a bunch of your questions uh, real quick in a real succinct format and, and see if this works out for you folks. Ted asks me, will Ghost be making the bullet forward slide lock for the Glock 43? For those of you that don't understand what that is, it is a slide lock lever that I invented to get forward of your shooting hand thumb. So you're not inadvertently either riding it so it doesn't lock open or you're pushing it up so it locks open when you don't want it to. No, Ted, the problem is is that there's just not enough material on the smaller gun to make the bullet forward possible. Uh, we looked at several ones. We even had a 3D printed one made, but it, it just didn't work out. Ghost is going to be coming out with a bullet center slide lock lever for both the full size guns and for the 42 43 in the near future. I saw the CAD drawing just this past weekend. I think a lot of people are going to like that because it's really low profile, but it still allows you to manipulate it with your thumb if you like. Jonathan. Jonathan asked, why white light instead of a hot spot from earlier? Um, if you've ever been in a situation where you're in a dark environment, and it's really not dark, uh, Jonathan, it's an inconsistent light environment where you have a dark spot here and a light spot there and maybe a gray area there because the eyes won't adjust quickly to inconsistent light. Well, if you've ever been in a situation where you're looking for an armed suspect in that inconsistent low light environment, you want as much light as possible. Quite frankly, if I'm searching a building, I'll hook my arm around it and I'll flip on the light switch so I can see like, I, like my eyes are intended. But if I have to come into a room with a flashlight, I want that thing to be lit up like a torch. So I want as wide and as bright a light as I can get. Also, top three besides Dave's instructors for the Armed Citizen Patrol Rifle, also uh, from earlier. Uh, Jonathan, this is a really tough question for me to answer because I'm of an older generation. I really am not acquainted with the new instructors that are out there, the younger generation. Uh, you know, I came in with the Masada Ubes, the John Farnham's, the Ken Hackathorns, the Jeff Coopers, and those are the guys that I still think of when I think of my mentors. And um, the first one that would come to my mind is I'd recommend Ken Hackenthorn for anything. The problem is Ken told me in an email here recently that he's going to retire. He's only doing like four or five classes this year. Uh, as far as some of the younger instructors go, I do not know them very well. Uh, so what I do know about them is from videos and looking to see what they say and, you know, blog postings and things, things like that. And there's a lot of really good ones out there. But without having taken their classes, I'm going to defer from recommending any of those guys. I hope you don't think I'm blowing you off because I'm really not. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what would you rather fight? One horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses. Now, when I originally saw this, I thought somebody was pulling my leg, so I just said it was stupid. And I find out again from my son-in-law that it's uh, a considered a legitimate question. I don't know how, but it's considered a legitimate question. Uh, I'm trying to picture a horse-sized duck and 100 horses the size of a duck, if I got that right. I... Anyway, I'll fight one. Uh, I don't care if they're 100 things the size of a rat. There's still 100 of them, and you can be overwhelmed. Keep in mind also that you can really only focus well on one threat at a time. It's not like Hollywood where everybody lines up to attack the star in order so they can do all their martial arts move. They tend to swarm you. And if you've ever been swarmed like I was one time in the county jail by a group of inmates, you realize that fighting multiple people is not all that good. So I'll always go with the one. How much has, how much 
influence has your grandson, Rich Nance, had on your teaching style and curmudgeonly attitude? That comes from Joe Paskvan, one of my good friends and students. And the only thing that I can say about Rich Nance is that anything he has possibly taught or anything that he knows or says he knows, he got from me. As a matter of fact, true story, his book, Gunfight, he wrote it on my back deck while he was drunk. No kidding. True story. All right, what do we got here now? We've got uh, less. How many years do you have left to get your to get your classes in? I'd say about two. Uh, I'm not a young man, and uh, I made the decision that when I could no longer shoot my own standards, I could no longer demonstrate the movement principles and things like that that I want to teach, that I'll stop. So, a couple of years probably will be shutting it down. So if you're interested in getting a handgun combatives class, sign up. I get people all the time that say, well, why don't you certify authorized instructors to teach your stuff? Well, unless I'm there, how do I know they're teaching my stuff? You know, I teach my stuff and it's a long time coming. So uh, probably when I'm gone, it will be gone. Though, you know, guys like Bucky Buchanan and John Willis who work with me, they'll probably still be teaching some aspects of it. So it'll still be around. Uh, let's see. Next question. From my daughter, Amber. What is it like to have two such amazing and wonderful daughters? Doesn't get any better. Doesn't get any better. Just don't call your only son perfection because that calls a lot of problems. Garrett, if you were short on time slash money, what would, what would the most effective use of one box of ammunition be? Good question. I like those kind of questions. If you've only got 50 rounds, then that 50 rounds should be uh, checking what you should be working on in your dry fire routine because that's where most of the good work gets done is doing a solid dry fire program. Go elsewhere here on our YouTube channel and you'll find a video directed uh, directly to dry fire. It was one of our more watched videos. But what I would do is, uh, as I would shoot a series of drills, I would time one shot from the various ready positions in the arc of ready, one shot from the holster, one shot uh, slide lock reload, one shot. Uh, maybe something like a build drill where I'm working on recoil. One of the um, recoil control drills I like to do is I like to go back to five yards and from varied ready positions see how fast I can put five rounds on a three by five card or five yards or, or 15 feet. Uh, all hits. Uh, my feeling is, is if you can do those in the blink of an eye, which is about 0.32 seconds, so about three rounds per second, 33, 33, 33, you're in good shape. If you can go out and do something like that in quarter seconds, go practice something else. But take that 50 rounds and chart your dry fire practice. Make sure you're doing well. An old question, but usually interesting. Shotgun versus rifle versus handgun for home protection. Depends on the structure you're protecting. In my home right here, I've got a lot of narrow hallways and, 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 and kind of sharp corners. I don't have a lot of room to maneuver. I go with the handgun because I can pull the handgun in. Think about a long gun. I mean, even if you tuck it up underneath your arm, it's still way out here for a pretty good distance. I can bring that handgun way back in here and I can defend it with my off hand. So I prefer a handgun in my environment. If I had a larger area, wider corners, bigger hallways, I would probably go with a shotgun over a rifle. I'm old school, I, I realize that. But over my law enforcement career, I have saw numerous people shot with shotguns and shotguns tend to be real definitive. Um, not so much for a 5.56 five, carbine, which is basically a real fast 22. i I'm not trashing the M4. Fantastic weapon system. I really like it. But inside the home, the home, the, the home protection arena, you know, 25 feet and stuff like that, I'd go with the shotgun. Um, my biggest takeaways from training with Kelly McCann. Presentation. Kelly is one of the most gifted instructors that I ever had the opportunity to train with. Um, he has a way to present to you, grab your attention, uh, and, and then demonstrate the things that he teaches. And I think in the time that I've spent with Kelly, 
that's what I got most was how to be a really good presenter. You recently, this is from Adam, you recently carried an appendix inside the waistband to train students better. Um, will you begin, uh, okay, I'm sorry, Adam. You recently carried AIW to be to better train students who attended your class and carry in that position. Outstanding. Will you begin using red dot sites to better train students who choose the red dot? I apologize, my eyesight's not what it once was. No, I won't. It's not that I have anything against the red dot. As a matter of fact, I did a year-long study of red dot pistols back in about 04, 05 for the old Law Officer magazine. I actually wrote a series of articles on that. And I'm, and I'm also named in Trigicon's study that they did on red dot sites. Um, I think red dot sites are a solution for some people. I'm not convinced that you need special training classes to use them. Uh, I think it's just a matter of, of, of working with it, practicing with it, and understanding you're not looking at the front side. You're basically superimposing a dot over top of something. It has its drawbacks. Keep in mind, it's not a carbine that's already attached to your shoulder. You're bringing it up. There it is because the, the stock touched your cheek. You've got to bring it out here, and you've got to be able to line it up. And I've seen people come up with all kinds of various ways to do that. And that is wonderful if you can always draw the gun the same way every time. But if you're suddenly back in here, and you're pushing this guy off of you, and then you're driving the gun to another opponent, you're not going to be able to use that fancy you know, angle draw. You're going to have to learn to bring that gun into the eye target line if you're going to use those sights. So... Um, I work with the students that have them. I think they're a great idea. I don't think that I will be doing it, but um, I, I think it's a, a good solution for some. Let's see, next question. Coke or Pepsi? Coke, but with a little jack in it. Not too much for that rum and coke like my son-in-law's. It's a little too sweet for me. But I can do the jack with it a little bit, but definitely coke. Uh, let's see. From John. With all the talk about defensive instructors, my question regarding instructors is, where does one also seek out the best instruction in regards to medical training skills, i.e. utilization of your IFAC? I know some people who say they have them but worry about their lack of training and using one. The guy I go to, John, right off the bat is my guy, John Willis. John is a uh, full-time firefighter and paramedic. He uh, has used tourniquets in the, the American streets. He, he was not a battlefield like a special forces medic, but uh, I like how John does it. He does it street relevant and he keeps out all the... He keeps it succinct. He gets rid of all the stuff that you're just not going to need in the Walmart parking lot or, or on the street in, uh, in urban USA. Beyond that, you know, probably some of the better known ones like uh, Archangel Medical and some of those. Um, just search around. You won't have any trouble finding those. Um, if they are a training company that is getting student and class after class after class after class, they're probably pretty good because the... Uh, the cream rises to the top pretty fast, and if they're not very good, their classes fold up. The best off the, from Terrence, the best off-the-shelf pistol, <laughs> the Glock, in my opinion. But does that mean the Glock is better than an M&P, better than a Sig 320, better than a DASA type of pistol like uh, like a PX4 Beretta? That's totally up to you. The fact of the matter is, is that in this day and age, all of the better known pistols are as reliable and, and well engineered as a human designed mechanism can be. So use the one that fits your hand. You can reach the trigger that you can shoot very well. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure that the mechanism itself is all that important or even the brand is all that important. So uh, my director of, um, of marketing, director, producer, son-in-law is telling me that the time is up. So we're going to sign off. We'll probably do another one of these just to kind of see where it goes. But thanks for checking in. Dave Spaulding, Handgun Combatives.